Hello guys and welcome to this single launch space station tutorial. In this I'm going to be showing you how to build this space station that you can send to almost anywhere in the Kerbal system, at least it should be able to. Ok let's start off with, you need the core, I'm going to use a rocker, uh, a couple of module and a science bathe because well it looks cool, it looks like it's proper station part doesn't it. Right now we're going to use a Rocco Max brand adapter and we're going to use standard docking ports for this and some of you may know that I've used large fuel tanks to use the large docking ports but we're going to go with the Rocco Max brand multi adapter here. Ok before we go ahead and build the multi brand adapter with all the docking ports let's add some solar panels and some RCS to the main core of the station because we want to be able to control it if we lose control of the, any part of the station that means we can detach it, move it to another part of the station, you can rearrange the space station to how you want it. Now with the RCS tanks what you can do is use the offset tool to move it inside or you can perhaps have it poking out just in case you want to select it but I like to hide most of them, not on all the modules we'll be building just because I want to be able to select some and transfer fuel back and forth from the RCS tanks. Now are the air RCS thrusters at equal distances from the top to the bottom, you, what you want is the RCS thrusters to be the same distance from the centre of mass for on either side of the centre of mass, if that makes sense. Unfortunately I didn't show you by here, I forgot to enable the centre of mass, but I know that the centre of mass is roughly going to be in the middle of those, those modules. Now all you have to do is add the docking ports to the multi adapter port thingy-majiggy, which I forgot what it's called. And once you've done that, we're going to be starting building the first module. I suppose the first thing is an escape pod. And of course that makes sense because if you're orbiting Kerbin with this or around the moon, then you can use this to get your Kerbals back. Now one little trick with this, uh, if you use the right decoupler, if you add the decoupler and you have the fairing there and you don't want the fairing, just click on it, add it a bit closer and you get rid of that fairing. And don't worry it does work, I've tested it out. Ok that is our escape craft, all we have to do now is add some parachutes to that, the Kerbals can land safely, otherwise it will be useless. And then uh, let's add some RCS just in case we want to rearrange where this is on the space station and don't forget as you're going along make sure that the staging is correct, that the parachutes will fire last then the decoupler and the first thing you want to fire is the engine. Ok and also don't forget to add some batteries and solar panels because you never know you may run out of power especially if you're on the dark side of the planet and your solar panels aren't in the sun. And obviously add some RCS tanks, I'm using the small ones here because we don't need the large ones, we're only probably going to undock this and redock this one so there's no biggie for that one. Ok RCS thrusters about equal distance, the centre of mass for that module will be close to the centre of that tank and of course I had forgotten to add the extra docking port. And by the way to copy a part on the PC, I'm not sure about consoles sorry, hold down alt, hover over the part, select it, click the mouse button and then you've copied the part and you can use that to copy multiple parts. Sorry I do not know how that is done on consoles guys. Oh yes guys and don't forget to keep on saving your design as you're building it because if your game crashes then you lose it completely. Anyway let's get to building the other modules. Now for this I've picked a probe core, that's not going to be part of the module, that is just something we can attach the parts to. Now start off with the docking port, this is very important, then the Brockomax brand adapter and then whatever parts you want to build the module of. For this one I believe we're going to do habitats for Kerbals. Can you, you can put four Kerbals in each of those habitat modules. Oh yes and add a probe core to this so that you can control this if you've got no Kerbals on board to be able to control it. Now let's finish this off by adding a Rockmax brand adapter and a docking port on the other side. But first off we have to also work out the weight because the way I'm going to build this is by having similar weighted modules on either side of the spacecraft so it balances out. Doesn't have to be precise at this moment, but as you can see, I've got Kerbal Engine Redux mod installed here to help me out with that. No other mods were used in this. And for console users, I don't know if you've got any options. 
And that is why I have shown the entire build of the space station on here so you guys can just follow along and know that it'll be similar or close to this build. Anyway, don't forget to add power to each module, RCS tanks and RCS thrusters. And for PC users, don't worry, I'll add the craft to be able to download. This is built in version 1.4.1. And don't worry if you're running in version 1.3, especially you guys on the consoles, because all the parts are similar, they just look different. They've added different skins to it. That's why I've purposely used, haven't used any of the new parts in 1.4. Well, now that we've built the habitat module, we're going to be adding it to the sub-assembly. So pick up the docking port, put it in the sub-assembly box and save it as habitat module or something that you know what you need it for, because we'll be using the sub-assemblies later on. Okay, right by here, I'm just double checking the weight that we've got on this module, so then we can get the ore module, which I think will be the heaviest. Attach it there, and you can see that I was originally going to use the larger docking ports, but I decided against it because, I don't know, I just decided the smaller docking ports would be a bit more of a challenge because they wobble about more. Right, now that we've got the docking adapter on there, let's check the weight it's a bit low than what we need so let's add another ore tank onto there okay so 10 ton 10.8 tons it's getting closer but it's still under the weight what we could do is alter the weight of the habitat module lower down and don't forget to use the offset tool to adjust the position of the rcs tanks and the reason why i've done that but left them visible is so that in the future, if we want to use the ore processor to make RCS fuel, we can right click on the RCS tanks to take the fuel out and put it somewhere else. Okay, let's put the ore module aside, check the habitat, reduce the amount of fuel in the fuel tank. That's why I've used the fuel tank so we can adjust the weight. And it looks like 10.9 tons is the closest we can get. So let's go ahead, save the habitat module in the sub-assemblies. If you write the same name as the habitat mod or module like I'm done here, then it'll ask you to overwrite the original save. I'm not sure about consoles. And you may also note that I forgot to save the ore tank module. Yes, I did forget and I had to rebuild it when I was assembling the full station. You may notice it in there. Okay, this module is going to be a bit more involved to build only because the way I put the science modules on the bottom. Okay, all I've done at the moment is got rid of the large docking port, added a smaller docking port, and put a probe core on the top so we can control it. Now you may notice we have a probe core on the bottom, we don't need that so we get rid of it. Add the small in docking port on the bottom, and I'll show you how I've attached that without attaching it to the small science base. You can see all I've done is put a girder on there, and then attach the docking port directly to the girder with the adapter. Now. The weight of this is a bit low, so what I've done, what we're going to do is add an RCS tank, one of the large ones. Now, if we find the weight is a bit too much now, we can empty the RCS tank until it's just right. Yes, I know we've got a lot of RCS on this, but that doesn't matter. And if you're wondering how I attach the science bays to the bottom there, all you have to do is use the radial attachment points, attach the science bays to them, and then a presto use four times symmetry, and then you have the configuration that I've got by here. Oh yes, and attach four struts to make sure that the docking port on the bottom doesn't wobble because it's only attached via the single girder. Now I'm gonna compare the weight of this module with the habitat module, and it's pretty close, so I think we can stick with that. Let's save it in the sub-assemblies. Also with sub-assemblies, what you can do is add multiple, so if you make a few little changes and you're not sure which one is going to be best to use for your uh, space station, then make a couple of them. It won't hurt because at least you'll know you can experiment with them and find out which is the best module to use. Anyway, what we're going to do now is the fuel tank module. Obviously, we've got an ore processing lab or module that's going to go up there, but we need somewhere to put the fuel, so that's what this one is. And I'm using a Rockamax X200 fuel tank. I'm adjusting the fuel amount in there. We don't need it full, we just want to make sure that that weight of that module is going to be about the same as all the others so we can balance the entire rocket out. Of course, add RCS. I find it's best to add everything on there before you try to work out the weight. And obviously, if you're playing on console and you haven't got the access to 
the amount of weight then just follow this guide what you can do as well is enable the center of mass and the center of thrust and try to get as close as possible to see the center of thrust is right below the center of mass the only problem is you'll have to construct the entire space station and i'd suggest in adding fuel tanks to every module and then increasing decreasing on the other hand what you can do is make multiple modules but use the same ones in the four corners so on the opposite side of each module you have the same type of module if that makes sense obviously by here i'm using Kerbal engine redux mod which makes things a lot easier right here i am just balancing the fuel out using an rcs tank and hey presto the fuel module is done so now let's go and construct the main rocket now let's load up the space station as it is the core now how do we attach this there's a couple of ways you can put radial detachment points but what i'm going to do here is create a rocket underneath this a small rocket and then we'll use some struts four in total i think is best because we've got four modules and then add fuel tanks onto the outside of the struts now then all we have to do is add some Rockamax brand adapters on the top of those tanks and then we can just add the modules on top of there you don't need to add docking ports on the top of these as the docking ports that are on the modules will act as decouplers and you can detach them individually and then just build your space station while you're in space okay so now we've added the modules don't forget to add struts everywhere that you can think of everywhere that you need to in between the modules and the fuel tanks below i suggest at least adding four to there then you're going to want to add struts from the center rocket to the outside tanks do this not just for the outside tanks but also for the modules wherever possible and perhaps even some struts from the top of the modules to the center of the space station now another a feature of chaos b is that you can right click on most parts and create an auto strut so it'll be sort of like an invisible strut that's all like inside the modules and stuff this works great for most parts however this has known in the past to invite the kraken so i suggest wherever possible use a physical strut part in the game right now let's get back to this now you've seen me added some struts some decouplers these struts are going to be the solar panels so like the struts that come away from the space station with the solar panels and the heat sinks on them so all we've done so far is add a strut add a decoupler and then add some of the larger girders on here and they're going to be sort of like the basis for our solar panels add a probe core obviously because we need that to control it so i suggest a small one now i've added extra struts on the bottom here but in the end i decided that rather than go for three uh, four girders we'll go for three girders because four seems a bit too long and obviously we need to be able to control this so let's add some rcs fuel tanks and for these modules you don't really need that much rcs because they're quite a lot lighter than the other modules that we put on there so some small tanks uh also balancing this is an issue so what you'll have to do is add two tanks perhaps on the top like i have done by here and then two tanks on the bottom obviously try to get rid of those square edges i don't mind the bulging of the round tanks poking out either end but those square edges do annoy me perhaps they should redesign those tanks just make them fully spherical that would be a lot easier right when you're happy with adding the fuel the rcs tanks now it's time to add the rcs now if you're in symmetry 4 you have to remember that you have to add the four points around the rocket especially if you're building it like this what you could do is build them separately then add them to the rocket later because they'll all be exactly the same the method i'm doing by here it takes a little extra work you know just adding the four rcs is easy enough but it's just that little extra time that you could save yourself 
And again, don't forget to add the RCS at equal distances from the top and the bottom of the modules. And you can see by here, I've messed up with the, the RCS tanks too close. And the main reason why I'm moving it, and it's probably not going to affect the RCS control, but sometimes I'm sure that some of the parts block the control, especially with the rockets, but I'm not entirely sure with the RCS. Okay, the only thing to add now is some solar panels, some small solar panels, not the large ones. That's because as soon as we decouple them, they'll have no power of their own except from the probe core, and they'll start losing energy, and we don't want to open up the solar panels when it's too close to the spatition because they'll be knocked off. So use some small solar panels just to make sure they have energy to be able to dock. And don't forget to put the solar panels on all four sides so that no matter which way it's pointing, you should get some sun on it. Because I've done that in the past, just put solar panels on either side and then I find that the side that's facing the sun didn't have a solar panel and I'd lose power. Okay, now let's add some solar panels. Now the way I've done this, I was able to add three solar panels on one side, but then I was only able to add two on the other side of the girder. Now I suppose what I could have done was put an extra girder so they'd, the girder would be sticking out a bit and I, I could add an extra solar panel on there. However, this design, I think it works great because you, you're not going to need that much more power. This design has four girders on there with a load of solar panels, about 20 solar panels in total. So I think that's more than enough, even if you're going to Joule and you're setting up the space station there for all processing. Now the final part for these girders is the heat sinks. And I've decided to go for the medium. They're just the right size. The large ones seem to be a bit too big, unless you want to build a huge, gigantic space station. But in stock KSB, you don't really have the parts to build a proper humongous space station so yeah you'll have to get modded parts of that if possible okay last one and i think i put that one on a bit skew if so let's correct that and uh yes that's done that'll be good enough now, every step that you build in this space station, don't forget to save it. Because if you make a mistake, you can go back, correct it. But if you gain crashes and you lose the entire build, then you're going to have to start from scratch again. It's better to undo a single mistake rather than having to build it all again. When you're putting struts on the girders, I think it's okay to add just two struts to it. It should be good enough. Also, yes, for the radial decouplers, reduce the force percentage ejection to zero because you don't want them to go flying off into space when you eject them in space. And also, you may have to enable tweakables in the main menu of the game, but that should be easy enough and it should be available on consoles as well. So it's not just a PC thing. All right, let's build a rocket for the ascent into space. Okay, for the first part, I think we're gonna be using a skipper engine. Also, don't forget to add fuel lines from this outer tanks to the center tank. We wanna use as much, get, gain as much fuel as possible. And yeah, I've set myself up with awkward angles by here. Then we'll add the skipper. As you can see, we have 2,206 meters per second from the skipper engine. Ignore the top one because the top one is the delta V of the escape capsule. So now we're using the Kerberdyne fuel tanks. So we've used the Kerberdyne adapter and I suggest using three fuel tanks. It seems to be the magic number. It's not gonna be too tall and it's not gonna be all good for you to fly in space, especially if you're using RCS controls. Also for the booster rockets, I suggest using the same setup as the center tank three Kerbindine fuel tanks and using the Mammoth engine on the bottom. That'll give you enough thrust to make sure that this space station lifts off the ground. However, when you add these, using the manifold decoupler, it seems that the engines are too close and I've had problems before where they explode because they're too close when you decouple them. But as you can see what I've done by here, I've put a girder on top of the decoupler so we can sit 
the boosters away from the rocket engines so they're not clipping. You can use the offset tool to move them a bit closer, that's okay, but just make sure that the parts aren't clipping because once you decouple them, you will have problems with explosions. Right, when you're adding the protective nose cone, you'll have to use the Kerbidine adapter on top of these rockets. Because there's no nose cone large enough. Why, squad? Why not? And also, don't forget to add struts everywhere where possible. Especially between the large Kerbidine tanks and the small Morocco Max tanks. Because that'll be the weakest point. And it is the weakest point, which I will show you in a little bit. Right, first off, make sure that the boosters are fully strutted up. Then add fuel lines from the outer tanks to the center tanks to make sure that you get... This is called onion staging. Now we want to add some separatrons. So add one onto the rocket. Move the separatron staging to the staging of the decouplers. And then all you have to do is copy that separatron and move it around. Don't forget, add separatrons on the top and the bottom of the rocket. Otherwise... They'll flip over and probably hit the center rocket. So place them as such. So when they decouple, they push the entire rocket away from your center rocket, making sure that they don't hit your center rocket. Right, you can see by here we're almost finished, but I'm adding extra boosters right here. Let's copy these boosters so we don't have to build them again. And the reason for this is that this will make sure that we have a lot more delta and will almost go anywhere in the Kerbin system. Right, now that I've copied and pasted the parts onto the rocket, you see the staging for all these outer rocket outer boosters are in the same stage. So the way around that is to copy the stage, put it aside, put an extra stage in the staging just above the stage you've copied, paste the rocket onto the girders as such, and you can see the separatrons will not fire on the same stage. They're all in their separate stages, and that's what we want to do. Now, all we have to do is set up the staging correctly. We want the outer rocks to be decoupled first, and also the separatrons to fire at the same time. And also, yes, don't forget to add the fuel lines from the outer rockets to the inner rockets. This is what's called an onion staging, where the outer rockets will decouple and feed fuel into the inner tanks and then the second layer would decouple and that the fuel from them would feed it into the center tanks. Right, you remember that I was talking about the center of the rocket and the part between the Kerbidine tanks and the Rockamax tanks will wobble. As you can see by here on the testing, it does. So what we're gonna have to do is right click on them and auto strut to heaviest part. You may have to enable tweakables again to have this feature enabled. But just do that between all the parts that you may think are going to wobble. And lastly, add some veneur engines as I'm doing by here. That'll enable you to have control of the large rocket when you're in space. But now here we are to get this into orbit. It's going to be a feat of flying. It's really simple though. All you have to do, launch up. Make sure you've got SAS engaged and slowly turn over to the right or uh, east. Well, the trick by here is to make sure that you're pointing always at the prograde marker as I'm doing by here, the yellow marker. And don't vary from that. You'll have trouble controlling it at some point. That's because the top of the rocket is not protected by a fair, which would make it aerodynamic. So, so yes, the rocket might flip out now and again, but just revert back and try again. Okay, so for this orbit, I decided to put the space station in a 200 kilometer orbit. So obviously make a maneuver node at your apoplapsis and just follow it. I'm assuming you know how to get into orbit. I'm just explaining that this rock will be a bit wieldy and it will be difficult to fly through the atmosphere. I think I had one flip out when I'm testing this, but, but as an experienced Kerbal pilot, I'm got a lot of experience flying non-aerodynamic stuff into space and successfully getting them into orbit. Right by here all I'm doing is circularizing the 200 km orbit and as you can see we have a lot of delta V that can get to almost anywhere in the Kerbal system. But unfortunately we do not need all that fuel so I'm decoupling these boosters and we might as well get rid of the main booster as well. I'll do that off camera. 
Right, here we are, the main event, building the space station. Obviously undock the one of the modules, and then use the RCS to sort of like push it away from the station because you need the room now to build a station. So do this with all the modules, make sure that you have control and that they all work properly. And probably what I should mention here is that when I build these, first off, I use the cheat menu to set them into orbit to make sure that they ha that I can control them, I can undock them, and I can do everything I require to do them. I call that the little simulation thing. The only thing I don't actually do is simulate launching and pretend, make sure I fully build it up, then I try to get the things into orbit. Okay, now that we've undocked them, right click on one of the docking ports, select control from here, and then right click on one of the station docking ports and set as target. Now you have the purple marker on the nav ball that you can use to maneuver your ship. So first off though, what I normally do is I try to line up the spacecraft or the module with the docking port that I want to dock to. So it, you don't have to keep on moving it around. And then thrust away from the space station until you can see the target on your nav ball. Then obviously go sideways, but thrust towards the space station and try to get the prograde marker over the top of the target marker. That way you're heading directly for it. Don't go any faster than one meters per second. In fact, what you'll find by here, I'm going at 0.6 meters per second, and we encounter the new bug that has entered the KSP world. Well, it wouldn't be KSP without those bugs. So what I do, I thrust a bit further away, and at this point, I, forget, I forgot that I targeted the wrong docking port at this point, so then I have to target the correct one and then adjust my approach. But once you come in at a certain distance, slow your thrust down to about, I don't know, I think I'd do it at 0.3 meters per second. You can use time accelerate, but not too much physical time accelerate, that is. But I suggest you do your first docking slow. Now, bearing in mind, as you're doing that, the other modules are slowly floating away so you may want to flick between that and the other modules to make sure they stay close enough that you can quickly flick, switch between the control of their modules, and then do the same again. Obviously this time, we will need to target the end of the module we just docked, but do the same process. However, this time you can use point a target. And what this will do is that will keep the spacecraft or the module pointing at the docking port that you've targeted. Now slowly but surely, maneuver your module so that it becomes in line with the docking port that you want to dock to. Now what you can do, as I said, you can go a bit further back here to make it that bit easier to maneuver towards your target and dock. What I like to do is use left, right, up and down while using the point at target using the SAS and slowly come in until that I'm sure that we're going to dock. As soon as you come in and the docking port touches the other docking port, switch off the SES and RCS so that the magnetic forces of the docking ports pull them together. And that is the last module and we have docked it. Now all you have to do is get the solar panels docked up. I suggest that you don't decouple them all at the same time, just decouple one, take control of it and do the same process. The only difference with these ones is that you may want to orientate them so that the solar panels are in line with the space station, just for effect. Again, coming slowly under 0.3 meters per second, switch off the RCS and SAS. And hey presto, the magnetics of the docking ports have docked them. And as you can see by here, the importance of lining up the modules of the solar panels to make sure they all match up. Because once you finish docking this last strat, you want to decouple the station from the main rocket, and thrust away from it, and then, hey presto, we have our space station. Now to control the solar panels, I use action groups. And then the same for the radiators. And doesn't this space station look awesome? Well, sort of. It looks like a space station. 
Let's put it that way. Let's get Jebediah out on the EVA to fly through all the solar panels. I normally when I do this, I normally hit one by accident because I'm terrible at death perception in games. So this is the single launch space station tutorial. If you enjoyed it, crank that like button, hit it or whatever you do it, curl it. I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer of single launch space stations.